Good morning. Welcome to worship. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, your king comes to you riding on a colt. The day of the Messiah is near. Speak to Jerusalem and cry unto her. The warfare is ended, that iniquity is pardoned. The spirit of the Lord is upon us to proclaim good news to the poor, freedom for the captives, sight for the blind, liberation for the oppressed, and the year of the jubilee. The kingdom is coming. Let us beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks. Our scripture comes to us from Mark 1, I mean Mark 11, 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing? Untying the colt. They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches and they, that they had cut from the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. you to close your eyes and to settle in and take a deep breath and I want those words right on right on to be on your in breath and out breath right on right on Over the broken glass of our world, the rumors meant to hurt, the prejudice meant to wound, the weapons meant to kill, right on, trampling our attempts at disaster into dust, right on over the distance which separates us from you. And it is such a distance, measurable in half-truths, in unkept promises, in second-best obedience, right on. Right on through the back streets and the sniggered at corners of the city where human life festers and love runs cold. Right on. For you, Jesus, do care and must show us how. 
On our own, our ambition rivals your summons and thus threatens good faith and neglected God's people. In your company and at your side, we might yet help to bandage and heal the wounds of the world. And so we pray. We pray for those this week who are grieving. We pray for those who are sick, who've, who've gotten COVID, who are suffering from cancer, who've had a fall, who are dealing with the aches and pains and illnesses of old age. Help to bandage and heal the wounds of the world, those that are lost, those that are feeling empty and lonely inside, those who are struggling to find work and to feed their family. God, we ask you to help bandage and heal the wounds of the world, those wounds inflicted on people when violence strikes in their home, at the bar, in the church. We ask you to help to bandage and heal the wounds of the world. Ride on, ride on, and take us with you as we pray together the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Freedom is coming. Freedom is coming. Freedom is coming. Oh, yes, I will. Freedom is coming. Oh, freedom is coming. revolution. 
revolutionary act. He was making a clear Masonic claim, directly appropriating the words of Zachariah's prophecy. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. In that moment, Jesus shows the crowd what kind of Messiah he is going to be. Not a warrior, but a lowly man riding on a donkey, a baby donkey. The crowd shouted, Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They understood what he was doing. The Masonic age, the age that they had longed for, is coming. A new world is breaking through, but it won't be the world they expected. God's kingdom is coming, but Jesus is going to Jerusalem. He is going to his death. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And in another part of the city, on the opposite side of the city, the war leaders and powerfuls were also coming into town in a parade. They were on their war horses in their chariots. They were entering the city from the opposite side. But Jesus' way was nonviolent. And in a few days, with his own body, he will confront those same people, those chariots and people of power, Pilate entering the city in all his glory. Today, the crowd shout their praise. Today, they believe that their liberation is near. But in a few days, voices will shout for his crucifixion. Where we fit in. How often has the church sided with the powerful against the powerless? Do we challenge the system or are we part of it? Jesus is going into Jerusalem. Will you follow? Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves, and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. Jesus knew the consequences of his actions. Because we have already heard the story of John the Baptist. He had been approached by John's disciples. He knew what happened to John. He knew that John challenged the powerful. Challenged the way they treated other humans. He challenged them to repent to their faces and his work, his words, led to his beheading and death. Jesus knew the consequences of his actions, of coming into Jerusalem that day and saying, I, I am in this tradition of prophets and messiahs. I am coming to you to tell you what God wants, what God desires, the kingdom that God is looking for. Are we willing to challenge the powerful, confront the practices of our nation? So within the last 10 days, and at the point I pulled this article from CNN up. It was seven days and seven mass shootings. Jamie Webb was planning to celebrate her mother's 50th birthday last week. But Ji Jong Tan, the owner of Young Asian Massage in Georgia, was killed Tuesday, along with seven others at the Atlanta area stars in a shooting rampage that has, ra has rattled the nation. I just want to hold her tight, Webb told CNN about her mother. Give her a hug, hold her hand, hug her for a long time. 
Four people were killed in Pants, Cherokee County Spa. Four more were killed about an hour later at two spots from 30 miles away, and more would have died if the police hadn't caught them. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers? And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. Wednesday, March 17th, Stockton, California. Five people were shot in a shopping plaza protesting, holding a vigil for an earlier shooting and became victims. They were wounded at that same location that someone had died at. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. Thursday, March 18th. Grisham, Oregon. Four people were injured, including one in critical condition in a shooting at a motel. One was shot in the room and the others were shot outside in the parking lot. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and large buildings. Then Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Saturday, March 28th, Houston, Texas. Five people were injured in a shooting at a North Houston club late Friday night. On arrival, the officers located a victim of a gunshot wound. He was transported to the area hospital for treatment. During an investigation into the shooting, detectives learned four additional people were injured in the incident. One man who sustained a gunshot wound to his neck is in critical condition. The other victims are all in stable condition. It stemmed from an argument. Someone got mad and pulled a gun. And he came out of the temple. Look at these buildings, they will fall down. Jesus invites us into a journey where we take down the powerful, where we take down the things that are hurting and harming other people. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Saturday, March 20th, Dallas, Texas. Eight people were shot by an unarmed assailant, one of whom died. They responded to a nightclub call. A disturbance was between two groups that broke out inside the nightclub. The unknown suspect produced a handgun and began shooting at the crowd. A total of eight individuals were injured. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Saturday, March 20th, Philadelphia. One person was killed and another five were injured during a shooting at an illegal party where 150 people fled for their lives. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Monday, March 22nd, Boulder, Colorado. Ten people, including a Boulder police officer, were killed in a shooting at the King Super Supermarket, according to police. It is impossible to boil down a life into a few words, a paragraph, a picture. Suzanne Fountain is described as a force to be reckoned with, both on and off the stage. 
Her death leaves a gaping hole in the Denver theater community. Fountain worked to help connect people with their Medicaid benefits. Her friend for over three decades, Monica Pardee, still is not certain of why Fountain was at the grocery store in Boulder that day. Pardee said Fountain lived in Broomfield. Broomfield. We're a week apart in age and we were born in New Jersey. She was just so real and authentic and down to earth. I mean, I fell in love with her the first time we started working together and it lasted 30 plus years. It's unclear how many mass shooting campaigns we actually had because we have decided as a country not to keep track, not to allow the police to keep track. We actually created a law that says that. The officials estimate that there were over 40,000 people killed in firearms deaths in 2019. I don't have the number for 2020, but they said it was even higher. In a year when there was a pandemic, the guns raged. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. We go with Jesus into Jerusalem. We go with the Messiah who preaches an upside down kingdom of peace and life. Even in the face of torture and death, we go with a Messiah who calls us to commit ourselves again to that kingdom, to the work of justice and peace. ourselves again to Jesus and to the upside down values of his kingdom where the outsider is welcomed the poor are filled with good things and all are called to a place at the table so I invite you to hold your palms up and you are the bold words although I think I put a P in front of it so you know Jesus who entered Jerusalem on a lowly donkey we commit ourselves to the core of the world. Jesus, who drove out the money changers and disarmed the principalities and powers. We commit ourselves to work for a just and economic system where all might share in the resources. Unarmed, Jesus, who faced the power with his own body. We commit ourselves to work for justice and peace. Jesus, who knew that even the death of a single sparrow was not missed by God, we commit ourselves to work for those who have no voice. Jesus, this Palm Sunday, we renew again our commitment to you and to the values of the kingdom of God. With God's help, we commit ourselves. Amen. So, Thank you for the gifts of food that you have brought. Um, if you are able to help, although I would say we probably only want five people to be safe, um, so that we're not too close to each other, we have 30 bags to pack downstairs in the basement to feed um, the people of our community who need an Easter dinner. So if you would like to help and are able, um, like I said, probably only five of us need to stay and pack. Um, please join us downstairs to do so. And thank you for the gifts that you give 
to support our ministry and to continue our work in ministry that we can bring light and hope to this place, to these people, to this community. Let us pray. God, we would grow with you. Yet sometimes there are thorns everywhere. Guide how we use our money, for we would grow with you. Bless the food that we have brought and the gifts that we have given, for we would grow with you. Amen. <laughs> first day of Holy Week, we will hear his call. Come, follow me. The God of Jesus Christ who calls us to walk with him to face the principalities and powers, to, to live the values of the upside down kingdom, to work, to challenge, to suffer. May that God be with you this Holy Week. And if nobody told you today that I love you, Remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. May you come and follow me. Amen.